This is my full review on the Hoka Mach 6. Really quickly, I'd like to go over a couple disclaimers. I'm six foot one. I wear a size 12 US men's. I am 205 pounds. As for my strike pattern, I typically strike on the midfoot to heel portion of the shoe. My zone two pace is around a, an 11 minute per mile pace. My weekly mileage is around 30 to 40 miles per week. And the mileage that I have currently on this shoe is 30. As for previous model experience, I have not run in the Hoka Mach 5 or actually any of the mock line. This is my first mock shoe from Hoka that I've run in, so just wanted to put that out there. As for specs of the shoe, uh, we have a five millimeter heel drop from 37 millimeters in the heel to 32 millimeters in the forefoot, as well as a US men's size nine is 8.2 ounces, so a pretty light shoe. The outsole has not been noticeable, which I think is a good thing. The rubber is somewhat on the softer side with great traction. I wasn't really able to test the shoe in wet conditions, but I would feel that the pattern on the bottom of the shoe would not do very well in wet conditions. Durability overall has been great though. I've put over 30 miles in the shoe as I said before and the etching on the traction pattern is still intact which is better than other shoes that I've tested. I could easily see this outsole lasting over 300 miles. Moving on to the midsole of the Hoka Mach 6, we have a super critical foam from Hoka which is a brand new foam which is super exciting. Me personally, I really enjoyed the ride. In the past, Hoka models that I've always ran in, they've always felt pretty cushioned, a little bit more stable, but not very bouncy, which some people would call a boring ride. However, with the Mach 6, this is totally the opposite. I feel like it's a very bouncy and soft foam that I've personally really enjoyed while I run. For a non-plated daily tempo trainer, <laughs> That was a mouthful, but I think Hoka really nailed it with this model. It has a great blend of impact protection as well as responsiveness. It's not too soft and it's not too firm, and it felt really good during faster, quicker runs. The one thing that I will note about the cushion is that over longer periods of time or longer runs, I would feel that the foam under my forefoot would not give out, but there wasn't enough of it, and I started having a little bit more ground feel, which some people do prefer. However, me personally, on my longer runs, I don't like to feel the ground, um, especially if I'm running a little bit at a slower pace. So that's just something to keep in mind when considering the Hoka Mach 6. I would say for longer runs, especially I'm a little bit of a heavier runner, I would want a little bit more impact protection um, for anything over a half marathon. Overall, I think that the Supercritical Foam, the new Supercritical Foam from Hoka is great, and I hope that they put it in all the models because it's such a fun ride, and it does a great job of impact protection as well as responsive cushioning. Um, I know that the Hoka, Hoka Skyward X is going to have the same exact foam, but a 48 millimeter sack height, which I think is gonna to be super interesting and I think that it can cover this foam can cover a wide range of paces from long recovery runs to fast tempo runs just depending on the stack height of each shoe so overall I really like the cushioning of the Hoka Mach 6. Moving on to the upper of the Hoka Mach 6 we have a Creel Jacquard upper I don't know if I pronounced that right but essentially to me it's just an engineered mesh with a thin gusseted tongue. Overall I really like the upper in my opinion, with uppers of running shoes, as long as my heel is locked in and it's not super, super heavy, um, I'm very happy. If the fit is good, as well as the materials don't bother or cause any blisters, I think it's it's excellent. And that's exactly the case with the Hoka Mach 6. They didn't do anything revolutionary and they didn't do anything that kind of shortchanged the shoe. Overall, I really like the upper of the shoe as they didn't do too much and they didn't do too little. It was just a standard kind of engineered mesh that hugged the foot really nicely with a thin gusseted tongue. Nothing was pinching. No blisters. I've had a great experience with the upper. Now moving on to the feel of the shoe. First of all, this shoe does run true to size. I do really like the fit of the shoe, even though I do have a little bit of a wider foot. I went true to size and I was totally fine. I felt like I, my toes had enough breathing room in the toe box, as well as the overall fit of the shoe was very nice and I wouldn't want to say snug because I don't want to scare people into thinking that you need to go half a size up, but it was a very comfortable fit and for me it ran true to size even with my slightly wider foot. For the stability feel of the shoe, obviously this is not a stability running shoe, however I do want to say that one of the minor cons of the shoe is that it does not feel the most stable running shoe that I've ran in. A lot of neutral running shoes do have a little bit of stability baked into them just by nature um, and I feel like Hoka, the Hoka Mach 6 is more 
more, I guess, not catered to stability, which is totally fine because it is a neutral daily trainer. Um, so that is one thing to note. If you severely overpronate or supinate, this shoe may not be the shoe for you just because I do feel that in the shoe, it is easy to teeter over um, either way. The overall, the feel of the shoe was excellent. I think, again, the theme of this review, right? Hoka is hitting the nail on the head. For what they have tried to create, which is a non-plated, neutral, tempo, daily trainer, I think that they did everything correctly with the Hoka Mach 6. Obviously, aesthetics have nothing to do with the performance of the shoe, but I wanted to touch on it a little bit in this review. I thought that the aesthetics of the shoe was okay. I personally really enjoy my oat milk, or not oat milk, but oat colorway of the Mach 6. I think it looks great, the colors at least. I think as for the overall silhouette, it just reminds me of this basketball shoe, the Nike KD5 Elite, um, which I can't unsee, but it just looks a little bit off to me as a running shoe. But again, aesthetics don't match the performance at all. The performance was completely awesome. I just wanted to touch on aesthetics for a little bit. So overall, at a price point of $140, would I recommend this shoe? A hundred percent, yes. If you're looking for a non-plated daily neutral trainer, I know that's a lot, but if you're just looking for an everyday shoe that can do a little bit of everything up until that half marathon distance, I would heavily recommend this shoe. Now, if you're looking for a stability shoe or you're looking for a highly cushioned shoe, this is not the shoe for you, obviously, because it is not built for that. I think that if you're looking for a shoe that can do a little bit of everything under 13 miles, you cannot go wrong with this shoe. Hope you guys enjoyed the review and stay tuned for the next one.